Najwa, hello. Uh, what's the secret to your defensive unit? Because you've uh, held some pretty big teams to uh, not very many points. Yeah, um, I don't know. We, we're a very strong unit. Uh, we always say like sacks, not claps. So sacrificial acts, not, not the applause that the um, forwards tend to get. Um, so yeah, we're just playing for each other and playing for the team. And um, I think we like to consistently play our own style of um, our own style of footy rather than necessarily playing to, to our opposition style. With that though, you've got Carlton this weekend and uh, Brisbane and North have kept them pretty quiet. How are you going to combat their um, forward line? Because they can be quite attacking, but they've had a couple of quiet weeks. Yeah, and I, I think we're aware that um, that kind of makes them a little bit more dangerous. So the fact that um, they haven't had as strong a start to the season, so, you know, they're going to they're gonna come out firing for us. I think, like, we're still naturally going to stick to, um, like, our defensive game style and play our game because we've found when we sort of get drawn into the opposition's playing styles, we, we tend to do worse. So we're better when we stick to what we know. Um, but obviously, we've just got to mitigate their really um, key forwards and then go from there. Um, and just one more from me. How's it been adjusting with and without Chelsea? Because obviously you've had her some weeks, you haven't had her, and then now she's potentially going to miss a couple of weeks again. So how has that been adjusting in games and also um, week to week? Yeah, I think that stresses me out more than it stresses Chelsea out. I, um, I asked her the other day what was going on and she's like, oh, don't even worry about it. Just, just keep it going. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's always better when you have Chelsea Randall on the field, I think. Like, the opposition won't say that. But for us, it's always good to have her there. Um, but, you know, like, she's, she's more of a presence, you know, than anything. So even when she's not on the field, um, she's, she's there giving us advice. She's, you know, it's, it's her presence um, more than anything that helps us. But I will also be very happy when she's back on the field too. No worries. Thank you. Josh from Channel 9. Hey, Nadra, how are you going? Hey, good. How are you, Josh? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Um, on that Chelsea note, it seems like, you know, whenever she comes off with these devastating injuries, she's just always got the biggest smile on her face and her first focus is just cheering uh, the, the team on and, you know, trying to give instructions where she can. Uh, is, can you give us an insight into the sort of leader she is and what sort of uh, strength and boost she is to you as a defensive unit, even, even when she's not playing? Yeah, yeah. Um... Chelsea Randall, and I think like you guys would have a sense of it, even just watching is like one of the most selfless, you know, courageous leaders that you can come across. Like she's the, she's the very strong definition of, of the word leader. Um, and yeah, she's just like, like what I was saying before, you know, I was a bit worried about where she was at and, you know, straight away, she's like, don't worry about that. Like, you know, we're focused on the game and I have complete faith in, in everyone to do the job with or without me, you know? So straight away, she goes into that, into that role of, well, how can I help in a, in a non-playing capacity? And um, she can do a lot there, you know. As a, as a defensive group this year, I mean, she started a few games at, at half forward as well. Was there, a, was there an emphasis anyway on, on you know, that this is going to be a bit of a new look back line this year and that, and that you guys were all ready to take on more responsibility? Uh, yeah, I think like... So like new look, we've got, you know, we've still got our sort of like our staples like MJ and, and Sarah Allen and, and they sort of always hold up the fortress. But um, just I think the depth that we have now this year, particularly in the players who may not have played last year or the new players coming in, it means that you can just roll, you know, new players through there like Maddie Newman who hadn't, hadn't played a game this year and, and stood up and played one of the best out of any of the girls out there you can just pop people into that and it still rolls on as it's supposed to. And I think that's one of the keys to the success of, of that back line. Do you, um, do you start, I mean, it's, it's only four games in, but you start to, you know, think about unbeaten seasons and those sorts of things. You've, you've been pretty dominant for, for in, across the first four rounds. Is that something that you guys will think about achieving? Uh, yeah. <laughs> The old classic is to not get not get ahead of yourself, and I always personally think as soon as you start to get ahead of yourself, you're asking for a loss, a big loss. Um, yeah, so we try to just sort of put those like those successes to the side and um and just look ahead to the next match. Um, but obviously, like we we are happy with you know the start that we have had to the season. Yeah, but I'm always a big one. Don't don't jinx yourself, you know. <laughs> um, obviously, three very important players missing last week due to COVID. That. What's this week looking like? Are we going to get those girls back? And do you think, um, you know, is everyone else pretty okay heading into round five? 
Yeah, I mean, um, obviously we've had some disruptions to the program with people in and out. Um, and we sort of, we all, you know, find out on, on game day, just like anyone else who's going to be, who's going to be in and out of the squad. But I love the way that we've sort of adjusted to that challenge. I mean, to have those girls go out, you know, my first response was, you know, a bit of shock and disappointment and almost a bit of worry. And then we sort of thought, okay, well, you know, now we're a little bit on the back foot, you know, what, what can we do coming at this game from like a slightly disadvantaged position? And like, I'm so proud of how, how we went about that game and to show that you can take two of arguably the best players in the competition out of our side and to still come out and perform. Like it says a lot about, again, our, our this year. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, we've got Brendan from Channel 10. Good afternoon there. Um, I just wanted to sort of keep on going on with the Chelsea Randall and how you cover her when she's not there. Who sort of takes a more on-field leadership role when she's uh, not there? Yeah, we've gone, we've looked to um to Sarah Allen. We've obviously got a very good um, leadership group, Stevie Lee Thompson, Eloise Jones, Ebony Marinoff, but we've looked to Sarah Allen to sort of take on that that captaincy role and she's done she's done a really, really good role there, really solid. And how does it change the way you play as well, if it does? Yeah, I think, um, you know, like like Doc says to us all, and it's it's really evident. I mean, you look at the way that Chelsea plays. Like, Chelsea is, is hard at it. She never misses an opportunity to attack the ball, and she's really courageous. And the only thing that you've sort of got to look at yourself is, okay, how can I take a little piece of that um, and do that for the team in the way that she would? Because she's out missing. And if everybody just steps up in those critical moments where, you know, somebody like Chelsea Randall would, and you just try to play, you know, 1% of your game like, like Chelsea would, um, will come away looking pretty good. So it's just more of everyone stepping up in those big moments, which is something that she consistently does herself.